Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. My name is Sister B and welcome to Islamic Audio Bites. I will continue to read from the article Laylatul Qadr which can be downloaded from the Galamullah website. Let's read. So Allah has called it Laylatul Qadr because of its great value and high status with Allah and because so many sins are forgiven and so many faults are concealed during this night. For it is the night of forgiveness, as was reported in Al-Sahiyan from Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever stays up during Laylatul Qadr, out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, all his previous sins shall be forgiven. Allah has given this night special characteristics which make it unique. It is the night on which the Qur'an was sent down, as we have stated above. Ibn Abbas and others have said, Allah sent down the Qur'an at one time from Allah al-Mafuz to Bayt al-Izza in the first heaven. Then it was revealed to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in stages, according to events, over 23 years. Allah has described it as being better than a thousand months. As he said, the night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months. Quran 97, colon 3. Allah described it as being blessed. As he said, we sent it, this Quran, down on a blessed night. Quran 44, colon 3. On this night, the angels and the spirit descend, i.e. many angels descend of this night because it's so blessed. And the angels come down when Allah's blessings and mercy come down just as they come down when Qur'an is recited and they surround the circles of dhikr, gatherings where Allah is remembered, and they beat their wings for the one who sincerely seeks knowledge out of respect for him. The spirit is Jibreel, peace be upon him, who is specifically mentioned in this manner as a sign of respect for him. This night is described as peace, i.e. it is safe, for the shaitan cannot do any evil or cause any harm on this night. On this night, Many people are saved from punishment because of what they do to worship Allah, may he be glorified. Therein, that night is decreed every matter of ordainments. Quran 44, colon 4. I.e., the affairs of that year are dispatched from Allah al-Mafuz to the angels who record the decrees. Who will live? Who will die? What provision people will be given? What will happen until the end of that year? Every matter of ordainments is decreed and that it cannot be altered or changed. All of this is already known to Allah before it is ever written down, but he makes it known to the angels what is to happen and commands them to do whatever they are enjoined to do. Allah forgives the previous sins of the one who stays up and prays during this night out of faith and in hope of earning the reward from him. It was reported in the Hadith of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, all his previous sins will be forgiven. And whoever stays up during Laylatul Qadr out of faith and in the hope of earning reward, all his previous sins will be forgiven. The phrase out of faith and in the hope of earning reward means believing in Allah's promise of reward for this and seeking the reward with no other aim or purpose such as showing off. Allah has revealed a surah concerning this night which will be recited until the day of resurrection in which he mentions the honour and the great value of this night. This is the surah in which he says, Verily, we have sent it, this Qur'an, down in the night of Al-Qadr. And what will make you know what the night of Al-Qadr is? The night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months, i.e. worshipping Allah in that night is better than worshipping him for a thousand months i.e. 83 years and 4 months. Therein descends the angels and the Ruh, Jibreel, peace be upon him, by Allah's permission with all decrees. All that night there is peace and goodness from Allah to his believing slaves until the appearance of dawn. Quran 97, colon 1 to 5. The phrase, and what will make you know what the night of Al-Qadr is, serves to draw attention to the importance and great significance of this night. The night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months means it is better than 83 years, as we have already mentioned. This is a great virtue 
the value of which no one could fully understand except the Lord of the worlds. May he be blessed and exalted. This encourages the Muslim to spend this night in prayer and to seek the face of Allah by doing so. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to seek this night, hoping to gain some good from it, and he is the example for this ummah. It is mustahab to seek it during Ramadan, especially in the last ten nights of the month. It was reported in Sahih Muslim that Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did itikaf during the first ten days of Ramadan. Then he, peace be upon him, did itikaf during the middle ten days in a Turkish tent, in which a mat was placed. So he, peace be upon him, took the mat in his hand and put it at the side of the tent. Then he, peace be upon him, raised his head to speak to the people, so they came closer to him. He said, peace be upon him, I did itikaf during the first ten days, seeking this night, then I did itikaf during the middle ten days. Then someone came to me, and he told me that it is in the last ten days, so whoever among you wants to do itikaf, let him do so. So the people did itikaf with him. He said, peace be upon him, I was shown an odd-numbered night, in the morning of which I was prostrating in mud and water. Then in the morning of the 21st, he got up to pray sub, and it was raining, the roof of the mosque leaked, and there was mud and water. He came out, and when he had finished praying, and there was mud and water on his forehead and nose, that was the morning of the 21st, one of the last ten days. In a report, Abu Sayyid said, it rained on the night of the 21st, and the roof of the mosque leaked over the place where the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was praying. I looked at him when he had finished praying Salat al Sub, and his, peace be upon him, face was wet with mud and water. Muslim narrated a hadith from Abd Allah ibn Unais, may Allah be pleased with him, that was similar to the hadith of Abu Sa'id mentioned earlier, except that he said it rained on the night of the 23rd. According to a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten days of Ramadan, when there are nine days left, and seven days left, and five days left. Laylatul Qadr is in the last ten days of Ramadan, and as stated in the Hadith of Abu Sa'id, quoted above, and as stated in the Hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, and in the Hadith of Ibn Umar, who said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek Laylatul Qadr in the last ten days of Ramadan. It is more likely to be one of the odd-numbered nights because of the Hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Seek Laylatul Qadr in the odd-numbered nights of the last ten nights. We should seek it especially in the odd-numbered nights, i.e. the 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th and the 29th. It was reported in al sayyan that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten nights, on the odd-numbered nights. According to the Hadith of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten nights of Ramadan, when there are nine left, when there are seven left, and when there are five left. So it is more likely to be one of the odd-numbered nights. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it was narrated that Ubadah ibn al-Samid said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, came out to tell us when Laylatul Qadr was and two of the Muslims were arguing. He, peace be upon him, said, I came out to tell you when Laylatul Qadr was, and so and so and so and so were arguing. So it, the knowledge of when Laylatul Qadr was, was taken away from me. Perhaps this is better for you, so seek it on the ninth and the seventh and the fifth. This hadith indicates how bad it is to argue and fight, especially with regards to matters of religion, and that this is a cause of goodness being taken away or concealed. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, But odd numbers have to do with what is past, i.e. when one starts counting from the beginning of the month. So it should be sought on the 21st, the 23rd and the 27th or the 29th. Or it may be with regard to what is left, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When there are nine left or seven left or five left or three left. On this basis, if the month has 30 days, these will be even number nights, so on the 22nd, there will be nine days left. On the 24th, there will be seven days left. This is how it was explained by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri in Sahih Hadith. And this is how the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed Qiyam during this month. If this is the case, then the believer should seek it in all of the last ten days. 
Laylatul Qadr is more likely to be in the last seven days. Ibn Umr, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that a man among the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was shown Laylatul Qadr in a dream and that it was one of the last seven nights. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, It seems that your dreams agreed that it is one of the last seven nights, so whoever wants to seek it, let him seek it in the last seven nights. Muslim reported, Seek it in the last ten nights, and if any of you are weak or unable to do that, then let him not miss the last seven. It is most likely to be on the night of the 27th. It was reported in a hadith narrated by Ahmad from Ibn Umar and a hadith by Abu Daud from Mu'aviyah that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Laylatul Qadr is the night of the 27th. The view that it is the night of the 27th is the opinion of most of the Sahaba and the majority of scholars. And Ubay ibn Ka'ab, may Allah be pleased with him, used to assert, without saying, inshallah, that it was the night of the 27th. Zur ibn Hubaysh said, I said, what makes you say that, Abu al-Mundir? He said, by the signs of which the messengers of Allah, peace be upon them, told us, that the sun rises that morning with no visible rays. Many marfu al hadith were narrated which said that it was on this particular night. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, also stated that it is the night of the 27th. He reached this conclusion by the means of an amazing process. It was reported that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, gathered the Sahaba together and included Ibn Abbas, even though he was very young. They said, Ibn Abbas is like one of our children. Why have you brought him here with us? Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, He is a youth who has a good mind and who asks lots of questions. Then he asked the Sahaba about Laylatul Qadr and they agreed that it was one of the last ten nights of Ramadan. He asked Ibn Abbas about it, and he said, I think I know when it is. It is the night of the 27th. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, What makes you think that? He said, Allah made the heavens seven, and the earths seven, and the days seven, and he created man from seven, and he made Tu'af seven circuits, and Al-Sahi seven, and the stoning of the Jamar seven. So Ibn Abbas thought that it was the night of the 27th because of this analysis. This has been soundly reported from Ibn Abbas. Another of the ways in which the conclusion was reached that it was the night of the 27th is by noting that the word fiha, therein, in the ayah, therein descends the angels and the ruh, Quran 97, 4, is the 27th word of Surah Al-Qadr. There is no shara'i evidence, dalil, to support this manner of analysis and there is no need for such calculations because we have sufficient shara'i evidence available to us. The fact that it is usually the night of the 27th and Allah knows best does not mean that this is always the case. It could be the night of the 21st as mentioned in the hadith of Abu Sa'id quoted above or it could be the 23rd as mentioned in the report of Abdullah ibn Unais, may Allah be pleased with him, quoted above. According to a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seek it in the last ten days of Ramadan, when there are nine days left, and seven days left, and five days left. Some of the scholars thought that it is more likely that Laylatul Qadr moves and does not come on a specific night each year. Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, This is the apparent meaning of the conflict between the Sahih Hadith on this matter, and there is no way to reconcile the Ahadith apart from saying that Laylatul Qadr moves. Allah has concealed this night so that his slaves will strive to seek it and will strive hard in worship, just as he has concealed the hour of Jummah, and so on. So the believer should strive hard during the days and nights of these ten days, seeking Laylatul Qadr and following the example of our Prophet, peace be upon him, and he should strive in making dua and seeking to draw close to Allah. It was reported that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, what do you think? If I witness Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? He, peace be upon him, said, Say, O Allah, you are forgiving and generous and you love forgiveness, so forgive me. Thirdly, a greater virtue is attached to itikaf on this night than any other night of the year. Itikaf means staying in the mosque to worship Allah, may he be exalted. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to spend these ten days in itikaf, as stated in the hadith of Abu Sa'id quoted above. 
He spent the first 10 days in Itikaf, then the middle 10 days. Then he told them that he had been seeking Laylatul Qadr and that he had been shown that it was in the last 10 days. And he, peace be upon him, said, Whoever was doing Itikaf with me, let him do Itikaf for the last 10 days. It was reported from Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to do Itikaf during the last 10 days of Ramadan until he passed away. Then his wives did Itikaf after him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, wanted to do Itikaf, he would pray Fajr, then enter the place where he was to do Itikaf, as was stated in al sahiyan from the Hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The four Imams and others, may Allah have mercy on them, said that he, peace be upon him, entered it before the sunset and they interpreted the hadith as meaning that he entered his place of itikaf and kept away from people after Salat al-Sub, not that this was the time when he started his itikaf. It is sunnah for the person in itikaf to keep himself busy with worship and it is forbidden for him to have intercourse or to do anything that leads to it because Allah says, and do not have sexual relations with them, your wives, while you are in itikaf, i.e confining oneself in a mosque for prayers and invocations leaving the worldly activities and he should not go out of the mosque except in the case of a pressing need. The signs by which Laylatul Qadr is known. The first sign, it was reported in Say Muslim from the Hadith of Ubay ibn Qabr, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet peace be upon him announced that one of its signs was when the sun rose on the following morning, it had no visible rays. The second sign, it was reported from the Hadith that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Laylatul Qadr is a pleasant night, neither hot nor cold, and the following day the sun rises red and weak. The third sign it was reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Laylatul Qadr is a bright night, neither hot nor cold, in which no meteors are seen. These three Hadith, they are referenced in the article itself, explain the signs which indicate Laylatul Qadr. It is not essential for the one who catches Laylatul Qadr to know that he has caught it. The point is to strive hard and to be sincere in worship. Whether or not one knows that one has caught it, it may be that some of those who do not know that may be better with Allah and higher in status than those who did know which night it was because the former strove hard. We ask Allah to accept our fasting, our prayer at night and to help us to remember him and to thank him, and to worship him properly. May Allah bless our Prophet, peace be upon him. That is it for today. The book's details, including where it can be downloaded from, is on the episode details. Please do join the Islamic Audio Bytes community on the Reddit forum to feedback as well as any other comments that you may have. Also, any reviews on the platform that you're listening on would be greatly appreciated. We are also on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. Do check out our website at islamicaudiobytes.com. Thank you once again for joining us today. Hope your day is full of goodness. Assalamu alaikum.